So I was looking around on the archive website and I found uh, an interesting paper by Ender Tenea, who's a mathematician from Brazil, and he proposed a interesting recreational arithmetic problem. And the problem's very easy to explain. You take a sheet of paper, write down the numbers one through nine, exactly like that, in that order, only one of each. Uh, that's, your, that's your starting point. Then you can, add any, uh, you can add operators between the numbers, add, subtract, multiply, divide, or power. You can um, use parentheses freely. And if you want, you can omit an operator between two digits, as I've shown, and that gives you the number 34 instead of an operator there. So the challenge is to find a formula that'll give you zero, the, the, the integer sequence zero, then one, then two, and see how far you can carry it. So his goal was to find all the integers between zero and 11,111, that just being a whimsical number. And he was able to find all of them except for 10,958. So there's where the name of my talk came from. Since that time, uh, a number of others have, have tackled it and found that if you allow a square root operator or a factorial operator, you can find 10,958. But I decided to start, had used that as my starting point and see how far I could take it. So I did the obvious thing, add a few more operators. Uh, modulo seemed promising. We've had a bunch of factorials running around and so there's big numbers and a, and a modulo operator is a way to bring them back down where they might be useful. Um, Nth roots, just an extension of square roots. Um, imagine writing a radicand symbol under the three and then going over under and taking the cube root of something. Uh, and gamma just looks pretty, so I added that one in there. And the, uh, I'm doing it with a program, of course. The program immediately found way up into the hundreds of thousands as I was developing it. So I said, okay, I'll take a goal of finding all the way up through 1,111,111. Well, once I got my program running, um, out of all of those results, it only found 1,111,105. So close. So what do you do? Well, I didn't want to just add more operators. That didn't seem very elegant. So what I decided to concentrate on instead was the representation of the number as I did the calculations on the computer. So instead of just using 64 integer, uh, bit integers for the representation, uh, that gave you a problem with things like two thirds. If the program saw two thirds, it would say, uh uh, that's not an integer, not going to work, go try something else. And yet, if you later multiplied it by six, the, it's, you're, you're back in the integer. So that ought to be allowed. So what I, um, what I proposed was instead of just using an integer representation, represent all the uh, intermediate calculations in the form of A divided by B times the cth root of D, where all four of those numbers are integers. Now, I never actually do that calculation. I just carry them along with the rules of fractions and powers and do the calculation in that form. Well, I ran that. Um, I ran that. I'm really not quite there, I'm sad to say. I started the full-blown program uh, three weeks ago, thinking that was plenty of time. The integer one finished fine. I've already shown you that result. The, rationals, the rational with square roots, the bottom one there, that's my big one that I'm waiting for, uh, is not done yet. I also have an intermediate one that just stores numbers in the form A over B, so just the rationals. The last one has the irrationals in there as well. So that's a bit unfortunate, uh, but I can, I can uh, give you a positive result anyway, as you'll see. Um, the, uh, it, like I said, it's been running for three weeks. Uh, I did go back and calculate how long, you know, given, given where it was at that point, calculate how long the whole program should run, and I got 40 days and 40 nights, so I've got, I'm only about halfway there. But if you look at the, rain, at, the, at the range of numbers that it, that it found, there is, a, there is a place to get some positive results out of that, and that is um, I use multi-threading heavily in the program, which means I know all the test cases, all the, all the equations it's going to evaluate, but I have no idea what order they're going to be done in. So some of the ones that are missing from the first case might have already been checked by the last one or the middle one. So even though 
they're not done, that it's not finished yet, I am pleased to report that if I took the union of the partial results so far, I did find all the ones up to 1,111,111. They're there on the website if you'd, like to, uh, if you'd like to have a look at it. And you can email me if you'd like to know the final results when those are available. Thank you.